Okay, so plenty of schools uh, had you on their radar. Uh, you were being highly recruited, but you chose Maryland. What made you uh, make that decision? Um, what made me make that decision was that, um, honestly, I think probably like my junior year, I, I wasn't even gonna go to Maryland. That was my mindset. I was like, I'm never going to Maryland. You know, I didn't like the way Coach Williams was yelling at players and stuff like that. I just, I just, I just didn't um, think I was that was gonna be the school I was gonna go to. Okay. Uh, I went on a few visits to other schools, but the thing that kind of stuck with me was my mom being able to go to the games. Okay. You know, Michigan was one of the schools that I really considered because of Tommy Amaker, um, but that was a 15-hour drive. You know, so being able to stay home, play in front of my family, my friends, that was one of the main things that kind of helped me choose Maryland. Then seeing Terrence Morris, I was a, a big fan of his and seeing how he played in the same position in a sense, you know, he's a shooter, tall guy as well. Um, so I kind of just, that's one of the main, those were one of the main things that kind of helped me choose uh, Maryland. Okay, so you mentioned Michigan. Uh, would that school or any of the other schools, uh, being, if you didn't go to Maryland, where would you have chose to go, shall I say? I, I went back and forth with a number of different schools. At one point it was like, oh, I want to go to Duke. You know, because I mean? education, I, don't, I was just, I was just throwing out. It was a, it was a number of schools. I kind of had my pickings, um, but Duke, I, I considered them for a second. I definitely wanted. To, I thought about Georgia Tech, um, for sure, and Notre Dame. I thought about them as well, but I didn't have the grades to get in there. Georgia Tech, the same thing, the grades. Um, it's funny when we was at ABCD camp, Chris Bosh and um, Daniel Horton mm -hmm. that went to Michigan. They would recruit me to go to. Um, they, Chris Bosch was going to go to Michigan too. So all, he was trying to recruit me to go to Michigan with them three. So it was going to be us three going to Michigan. So he was recruiting me the whole time doing ABC to camp. Oh, man, we all got to go to Michigan, us three and him. We're going to Georgia Tech. So, but, um, but yeah, so Michigan was one of them. Um, even when Tommy Amaker was at Seton Hall, I was like, wherever he's going, I'm going to go. But like I said, that distance, that drive uh, was one of those things that kind of did it. I looked at Charlotte for a second because of Rodney White to see what he did. He's six eight, six nine, can shoot it. The position he played and what he did to did for him. Um, so it was a, it was a number of different schools that I thought about and that I really considered. Some of them I just couldn't get in because of the grades at the time. So gotcha, gotcha. So you know, in life we always have a game plan. So you could get to Maryland, you have a game plan, but it didn't quite go the way you expected it. Right. Let's talk about what happened there. Um, I think it didn't go quite as everybody expected it to go, honestly. Um, you know, they just won a national championship the year before I got there. Me coming in, a McDonald's All-American, played down the street at DeMatha, highly recruited. So all these expectations are coming up. I had high expectations for myself as well. I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to go in here, do like a year or two, and I'm out. That was my mindset, going in. And then I just, you know, it kind of just hit me. In, in, in regards to the lifestyle that I was going into, in the sense of being who I was, going into a school that I'm grew up in the same area, everybody finding out everybody knew who I was, okay. being having being able to have access to you know the clubs and seeing that atmosphere. Because when I was in high school, I wasn't really doing too much. I was in I was into all boys school. Um, I really didn't hang out too much. So when I got to Maryland, it was just like man, I started hanging around certain people and able to get access to certain places and clubs and then you got the, the females and you got the, the drinking. So it was just, you know, I had this mindset that I want to get to the league, but now I just got put it, pushed into this whirlwind of partying and the girls. And um, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, it's, it was something I just couldn't get out of. As much as I was like, man, all right, all right you know, I'm going to focus. I'm going to get in this gym. I'll go work out. And then I'm, I'm running to the to the club. Or, oh, man, I just, got, I, just, I just got this new girl's number, man. I'm a, I'm gonna go catch up with her. So that was like my, one of my first things. It was like, it was something new to me. And it was something where uh, I tell players now, man, you just, if you really want something bad enough, you're gonna sacrifice and dedicate yourself. You know, if you got guys like KDs and other top players that was able to get through that. Now I'm not saying that as a college player, you can't have fun, right. but you have to have that balance. I'm talking about like, if you really wanna get to the league, you gotta like, you gotta be a whole different lifestyle. Yeah, you can have fun, but you more so like, like, for example, Juan Dixon, those guys, they stayed in the gym until when people left, they still was in the gym. Shoot, when the lights were out, he stayed doing that. Steve Blake, all those guys, I used to see them doing that. So, like, they probably had fun, but it was like, yo, we got to take care of court first. And right. then we can have fun here and there when we can. But, like, for me, man, I was in the club all the time. Like, people would see me every Friday, man, I'm up in Dream or Love, man. And, you know, like, it, it was just one of the things that's like, for me, I was like, man, I'm, it was like, man, I said, like, I made it. 
I made it to league already without having the money. You right. know what I mean? I could do whatever. I could kind of go wherever. And um, I just got caught up. I mean, as bad as I wanted to focus and dedicate myself back to the game, it was like that thing just kept pulling me back in. And um, I just kind of like, in a sense, I lost myself, I tell people. You know, my mom recorded every single college game. Every single college game. I have not watched not one. I probably watched the, the ACC tournament. That's when I played well that tournament. We won the ACC championship. So I'll probably watch that. But every other game is like, it's like I'm I'm scared to watch those tapes because I'm like looking at somebody that wasn't even me. Right. You know what I mean? It was one of those things. So I tell people all the time, like people, oh man, he was some trash at Marana. Yeah, I was. You know what I mean? I didn't I didn't I didn't let me not just say that, but in the sense of I didn't have I didn't meet the expectations that was put on me. Okay. You know what I mean? I think my expectations was at a high level and I didn't meet those expectations. I think as far as like my college my college career is like probably average compared to what a normal player would get. But like as far as what was put on me, being a McDonald's All American, top recruit. It was I didn't meet those expectations and my expectations, my expectations was higher than everybody else's. But like I said, I just got caught up, man, and lost myself. And like I said, I got all these, all this film, man. I don't even, I don't even pay no attention to because, like I said, I'm looking at somebody that wasn't even me, in a sense. So, okay. so you know, you mentioned expectations. Um, you say you didn't meet the ones that were set on you, and nor did you meet yours that were higher than that. Talk about some of the highs and lows uh, behind that. Uh, we know about the party, but anything else took place? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, there were, like I said, there were times when people saw, oh man, he gonna be there, 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 there he is right there. You know, I had games where I would go out there and say I score like eighteen, they had like seven rebounds. Next game I had two and one rebound. You know, what I mean, it was stuff like that, the inconsistency that was throughout. You know, and I remember my senior year, I was like, bet, all right, this is what I'm gonna do. You know, so I'm a senior now, we gotta be a leader. Um, I remember thinking about the Maui that that. Uh, that year, and I, I played well, and you know, I remember when the coach was telling me like, "Yo, some couple of NBA teams are talking, you on their radar." I was like, "Cool, I'm, everything is working out. I'm working. I'm staying after practice, working out late the night." Mm -hmm. And um, I actually had a, a minor knee surgery um, going into Maui, but it wasn't healed quite like I wanted to. And I remember coming back home, and we were practicing, and just being frustrated with the process of it all. Right. And for me, you know, when I was in college, man, there was times where. You know, I'd be in my room and I did a lot of drinking in my room. You know, just kind of like I used to be antisocial in a sense when it came to hanging out with my teammates. I, we hung out here and there, but I was never that guy that was like, like I we had go out to bars, some down the street, and I just like disappeared. Okay. You know, so I was kind of like they had that antisocial mentality. But I go in my room, I drink, and I remember one particular night I uh, I uh, went out. I was drinking in my room and I ended up we was banned from the bars. We were banned from the bar. We weren't supposed to be down there. But me, I go down there anyway. You know, just like for me, my whole thing was when I was on campus, I always wanted other students to know that I'm just like them. Okay. Now, when I kind of like, when I used to go out my way to do that, not like, intentionally, that's just who I was. I always want to get along with my classmates. And, you know, there's a persona put on us in the sense of athletes are, you know, jerks or have an ego. So I used to like hang out with everybody. And um, I ended up going out, going down to the bars one time. and end up getting caught up in a situation down there okay. and then end up having to deal with a legal legal situation. Oh. My senior year. <laughs> a time when I was like, man, cool, I'm, I'm going. And that one night I go down there and it was and like this incident probably took place like probably lasted like a minute. Oh. And it just kinda just took off from there and then just and then after that my coach kinda like was very upset and disappointed in me, you know, so I mean my time went down, you know, I wasn't playing as much. It was just like kind of went down here from there, you know. And uh, I remember going into my senior year, that the second semester after we lost our last game, I ended up just like took, taking off my second semester. I didn't even finish my second semester. Got off campus. I just wanted to get away and focus on uh, the NBA draft, that those workouts and things like that, just to kind of like get that taste out of my mouth in a sense of okay. that college experience and kind of get back to what I believe who I can be as far as a player. Okay. So, you know, sounds like a lot of adversity. Let's talk about how did you face the adversity and when did reality really like set in for you? Um, how did I face it? It was like I said, it was tough because like this is something that I'd never been through in my life. Right. You know, like going through my high school career, I was everything was pretty sweet in a sense, you know. Right. Um, then going through, even in college, I go party, hang out, but nothing significant ever really happened in that sense until this, this uh, situation happened as far as dealing with the law. And um, 
So my whole thing was, okay, just keep moving forward behind us and keep moving forward. So like I said, my thing was I just got away from campus. Everything that I felt that was a bad feeling, I just kind of got away from. When I went to start working out, really focused on that. And I was trying to I prepare for the Portsmouth. Okay. But I didn't even get in Portsmouth. So I had to call the guy who ran Portsmouth, me. I called the guy who ran Portsmouth and said, hey, you know, I'm trying to get in. He said, there's no spots available. I said, look, I'll play any position. You need me just to try to get in. Nothing. So I called Coach Wooten, kind of told him what I wanted to do. He made some calls and it was still kind of like hard for me, tough. But there was no more room left. Right. And I didn't have a great senior year, so of course I wasn't getting invited. So I remember one time I talked to the guy. He said, hey, look, if any of the spots open up, I'll call you. Probably like an hour later, he called me back and said, hey, a guy from Richmond that was got hurt in the tournament, mm -hmm. got hurt, you come in. And I was like, bet. I said, cool, this is what I'm going to do. I already was preparing for this moment anyway. I'm going to go down there and prove a point. Went down there, averaged like 13 and 9. Did, did what I had to do. All the scouts were talking. Uh, people coming to me like, yeah, the teams are talking. They was trying to wonder, out, wonder why you didn't do these things at Merlin, but they kind of like, whatever now. You know, it's right. like we're moving forward. I was like, cool. And then the, uh, the, the poor smell, they're like, all right, late second round. I was like, cool. I said, man, that's huge coming from my college career. Right. I was like, cool, I'll take it. I don't care. I just want an opportunity. Man, like four days before the draft, I got to go to court. 